Hello everybody. Hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas again. I am sitting in my super cluttered outdoor kitchen. I apologize for the mess, but we're going to go over something very important today. And that is I'm going to revisit my secret chicken feed mix because there were a lot of questions that came in and a lot of people asking about substitutions and things. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give a lot of information in this video. Some of it, when I edit it, may not be relevant, so there may be some cuts in there where I apparently have edited something out. I'm trying to keep it short because a lot of comments I get on all the videos are, well, you talk too much. That and the fact that, oh, you look like you just fell in a cement mixer. Well, I can't help that if I'm working with cement all day, can I? But anyway, let's get into the secret, my secret feed mixture. First of all, I spent several years working in the, um, in the egg business on a commercial basis for one of the largest companies in, um, in the United States. And we had, uh, between all the farms I went to, we had something like three million chickens. So I learned about the nutrition <coughs> the nutritional needs, the, uh, how to care for them, um, how they lay, all the things you'd want to learn. And I learned it on a commercial basis, and at the same time having my own small flock, I learned how to manage a small to medium sized flock. Now a small flock would be you with two or three hens or nine hens in your yard, um, and a medium flock would be, let's say, up to 500 chickens total. Uh, as people have noticed, I have a lot of roosters. We happen to like the crowing, but it is irritating in the background. But at any rate, I learned about small flock management. Then I spent about a year in the um, in a commercial feed mill, and this was an independent where they mixed their own feed. Now this is very important. It was an independent that mixed their own feed and purchased their grains from the farmers. They actually had a buyer that went out to the different farms throughout the uh, the, mid, the Midwest and the Great Plains to buy the uh, grains that they used. That's quite important as we go on a little further. So I, I got a lot of this knowledge, and this is what I impart on you. It's also the reason why I recommend against using a commercial feed, especially and particularly those that use binders like bentonite clay. And there's other binders besides bentonite clay that they use. Uh, because what you're doing is you may have five pounds of bentonite clay in a bag of feed you just paid $17 for. That gets awful pricey because bentonite clay is just like fiber. It goes right through with zero nutritional value. I prefer to mix one that doesn't have a binder. Now, since my first video, I shopped all around all the independent feed mills here in uh, West Texas. And as many people know, we live in Terlingua down near the Mexican border in Big Bend. I found a feed mill in San Angelo, Texas, which is 300 miles from here, that is an independent. And when they... Um, when they process their feed, uh, when they're ready to extrude to make their pellets, they actually use heat to heat up the corn and the soy. But I'm holding corn because corn is really the one that, that we're interested in. They heat the corn up, which makes the gluten rise and come out. The glue, gluten is, is, is gluey if you've ever made bread, you know what I mean. Brings the, it heats the gluten, brings the gluten out, then they extrude it into pellets and cool it down. That is creating a pellet with no binders. Now, the other feed mills, the uh, ones that have chess boards, um, uh, for example, and are, uh, for their logo and are taking over most of the feed stores in the country, these people have come up with a modern, and a lot of times today when we use the word modern, we mean modern in parentheses or in quotation marks because the modern process now is a cold extrusion process, which they say cold, and you say, oh good, the vitamins and minerals haven't been destroyed. It doesn't get that hot to destroy the vitamins and minerals, but cold extrusion means we got a binder in there, buddy, and it's probably clay. So I was lucky, after I did my first video, I found this mill, I showed, told them what my mix was and what I did, and their mix was ground soy, ground corn, and ground alfalfa, which alfalfa, hay or just pure alfalfa, is excellent. I mean, I don't have a problem with that, and their own premix, and the price was very much cheaper than the chessboard company's uh, feed mixes. So you have a better mix, and it's it's less expensive, but it's only 17% protein. So I still have to add soy meal to my mix uh, to bring it up to 20%. Now, why do I do 20%? 
The commercial feed feeders are using 16 and 17 percent. What you end up with is at the end of 18 months or so, right around in there when they rotate the chickens out and bring in the new pullets and take the older hens out that are going into the molt and they're not going to lay, so they just kill them. What you have at the end of that 18 month period is you've got a skinny, skinny little worn out hen that all that, that, that she's capable of doing is laying an egg. No good to eat, no good for breeding, no good for anything. Well, for them that's perfectly all right, but for you and I, first of all, a lot of you folks that have contacted me, your chickens are your pets, you're not going to eat your pets. You don't object to eating chicken, but you're not going to eat Petunia or Clara. But, um, people like myself, I do have to rotate the spent hens out and I do have to slaughter the spent hens. So I'd like the spent hens to have some meat on them. I'd like them to have a better quality of life, which is why they free range. So I have healthy, free range hens running around here that lay the eggs. When they finally do become spent hens and have to be slaughtered, they have meat on their bones, they're flavorful, and they have had a really nice life right up to that last five seconds when they go, hey, what's the man doing to me? Ah! And they're done. It's a better life than the poor commercial birds, because I was in the commercial business, and believe me, it's nowhere near as bad as the animal rights people will let you know, but it's nowhere near the life a chicken should have. So let's get into my secret feed mix. Now, again, I've got to tell you, it's uh, a 130-mile round trip for me to go up to my local feed store, and the little college boys that worked there were busy talking to me and talking amongst themselves. They forgot to give me a couple of things, uh, and one of the ingredients that I need here is wheat. Now, particularly some folks in Africa have, have contacted me about wheat. I can't find wheat. I just had someone in, and believe it or not, I had somebody in, in the Houston area contact me and say, I can't find wheat anywhere. Well, wheat is put in chicken scratch. And I don't know if it's done on in purpose or not, because I don't remember, we never got into that in the feed mill. But wheat, when you put it in chicken scratch, it gives a chicken something to gouge around and look for during the day. But it also slows their digestion up enough so their crop feels full, their gizzard feels full, they feel fuller, but their digestion is slow. So wheat will slow the digestion. So when you go and you use um, my feed mix, bear that in mind and don't substitute wheat for anything else. If you have to substitute, make the substitution be for the wheat or for milo. But don't substitute, in other words, don't short them on corn thinking you're doing them a favor and add wheat because you're slowing the digestion down. And this can be a problem if you're raising chicks. You're going to grind the wheat up, but it's still wheat and it's going to slow their digestion. So let's get into the feed mix and we're going to use, we're going to substitute corn for wheat, and I will tell you that this is a substitution. And I apologize for that, and I also apologize for the fact that I don't have a premix here to add to the mix, and I'll get into the premix in, in a, a minute, but the reason I don't is I'm now not using my own mix, but I'm using this um, the, the independent feed mills mix, and they have premix in it, so I have no need to have premix here. But, for those of you that, that don't know what a premix is or your local chessboard square um, uh, feed dealer looked at you like you were speaking Swahili when you asked uh, about uh, premix. Uh, I order the premix from a company called Advanced Biological Concepts. Now there's other premixes out there that are equally as good. That's just the one I've um, ordered from. ABC is, you know, short, Advanced Biological con con um, Concepts and it's their, um, their all-in-one premix. Um, I think a 22 and a half pound bag costs me, uh, gosh, I, I don't honestly remember, folks. I think it's like $32, but shipping is like 18, so it's a lot of money for shipping. It's a little cheaper on the shipping per bag if you order two or more bags. Uh, but any premix will work if you're lucky enough to find it, or if you're extremely lucky like I was, and you find a, a feed mill that, number one, uses a hot extrusion, extrusion process, no binders, and adds a premix, you're probably going to be ahead of the game. It costs me roughly somewhere in the $12 to $13 per 50 pound range to make my own mix. Now that's including the premix. Um, and I pay $12 a bag for this, for my, uh, the feed that I get from the independent mill. You, on the other hand, are paying 17 or more 
for the chessboard square brand uh, crapolina that they that they sell you to, with the, with the clay binders in it. So let's get to my mix. We'll get the recipe and. Um, um, move forward with a couple of things that you do need to know, and I'm going to try to get all the questions in here that the folks have been asking me from all over the all over the world, which shocks me because I, I don't I don't think I'm that interesting. But let's get forward. Let's get okay. Ready. Now, the first thing I want to do is get into a, a mix for chicks. Now, when you're going to make a mix for day old, three day old, week old chicks, you really can't use the um, cracked corn and you can see when you look here you see how big those kernels are for those little tiny beaks so you have to grind the corn now you can go and buy a uh, and I'll be in and out of the frame here you can go and buy a, um, a grinder a, a real a regular professional grinder or um, I don't want to say professional but a big grinder they're about four hundred dollars for a hand crank then you can buy a little electric motor and a belt to go on it and grind it if you're going to grind everything yourself and you're going to grind your own flour to make your, uh, you make your bread and baking, um, or you can use a uh, blender. Now, I'll, I'll caution you, if you're going to use a blender, this is a restaurant quality blender. Do not use the $30 9-speed one that you get at, uh, at uh, Wally World. Here I'm going to show you in real time. You see I've got the blender half full of cracked corn. This is in real time how long it takes to make a powdered mixture. that you're going to have the, the, the right size to feed your chicks. Um, now, that took me, well you timed it, to go through a 50 pound bag of, cr of cracked corn and turn it into this, or whole corn, you're going to be doing that 110, 120 times to do that. So you decide, now like for me, uh, uh, three times a year I raise chicks, I'll just spend an hour with this thing and grind up the, the chick feed. Um, Depending on how big um, how big your flock is and whether you're grinding your own stuff for bread, you make that decision. But again, with the independent feed mills, the feed mill that I worked for um, actually had a division that did the commercial chicken feed. Well, he also did a commercial hog feed because where we were in North Florida, the um, there was big chicken and hog business uh, of breeders there. So he had a commercial hog feed that was either 14, 16, or 18 percent protein. Now, first of all, 14, 16, 18, it was a little bit more expensive as you went up, but every one of it, every single bag was 18 percent because it was too expensive for him to, to do 14, 16, and 18. So he just priced them and a little bit deceptive, but 18 percent protein is not going to hurt you. So find out what their highest protein level is and that's and then buy the cheapest one but figure that it's 18 percent buy pay for the 14 percent but figure it's 18 if that makes sense now the commercial mix uh, that particular mill they took and they made a ground corn just like I did and a ground soy mix them together to get that 18 percent ratio with the premix and the, the premix that they gave the pigs was perfectly all right for chickens I was cool, so I took that and I was able to substitute their hog mix for my corn, soy, and my pre-mix, and it came out a lot cheaper because hog food is cheaper than chicken food because you can save money if they make a hog feed that is a ground corn and a ground soy. If it's pelletized, back to my mix. So again, that's another little trick. The people that are in places like Africa and India, I've gotten uh, in the Middle East. There's a fellow, there's a, a couple of um, uh, breeders in Egypt. If you watch this, hello guys, that have contacted me. Um, stay with your independent grains because you're not going to find that kind of hog feed there. I already know that. So what we've got here, we're going to do our measures in parts as opposed to a. a cups or shovelfuls or whatever. We do it in parts. Um, 
and we're going to use and for parts you can use any size of container. This little container I like to use it. I've had this thing for three years and it hasn't broken. A little cottage cheese um, uh, pint. I think it's a pint. Anyway, cottage cheese. I have these cool little buckets that Debbie got for her horse, and we use these buckets for everything. I even made lights for them. They hang like that in the uh, horse stable. And then, of course, the everywhere in the world five-gallon bucket. You can use those as measures, or if you have a large enough flock, just use your 50-pound bags for a part. So a part is just exactly that, an equal measure. But if you're going to do parts, do it by weight, not volume. Now this comes up to another question, sunflower seeds. People said, can I put sunflower seeds in? No. Feed sunflower seeds as an extra treat. Don't put sunflower seeds in your feed mix. And here's why, and I don't have any sunflower seeds because that was what my little college boys forgot to give me. I got to feed that to the wild birds. Sunflower seeds are a great big kernel with a lot of fiber and a lot of shell. A big, great big seed, rather, with a lot of shell around a small little kernel. That's a ton of fiber, and uh, to me it would be a nightmare to try to figure out the fiber versus protein value of it. And to buy sunflower um, kernels is just cost prohibitive, just very much the same way as... And I can't find where I put it. Very much the same as millet. Much the same as millet is extremely expensive because millet is a harder grain to grow. But millet, if you use millet for anything, and if it's cheap, uh, I'm talking to Africa now because I know millet grows very well in Africa. Um, if millet is cheap, by all means substitute millet for any of the other grains and don't feel bad. But here in America, millet is expensive, so I leave it out of my feed mix. But uh, it's in my wild bird mix, of course. Uh, millet is great. Eat it yourself. Doesn't have much of a shell. Sunflower seed, on the other hand, has a huge hull. So feed sunflowers as a little extra treat. A smart thing to do, folks, would be to get a container or build a raised bed with a chicken wire cover over the top of it about that high. So you've got a raised bed or a bucket. And your dirt level, if it's a bucket, your dirt level is going to be down about here. If it's a raised bed, about the same thing, so about six inches up, you want a chicken wire cover across the top. Then take and just throw a whole bunch of sunflower seeds in there and let them sprout. When they get, when they poke through that chicken wire, your chickens will come and eat those sunflower seeds. There's more protein in that than anything. Great thing to do. You can do that with millet, you can do it with wheat, you can do it with any grain. Every single one of you that has a flock, even the guy with three hens, you can have one of these, just like I said, with a little cover over it. Let that stuff poke through. Excellent. But let's get into just the grain mix. So the grain mix here. Let's start with the um, let's start with the corn that we just ground up because I said we were going to do the um, chicks first. So we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do a chick mix. This uh, cottage cheese container, mine there, you can see in the sunlight. It's about three quarters full. So we would take it and put it into our container. This is one part of corn. Now, we would, we would take that one part of corn, and we're going to add two parts of soy, which if that was three quarters full is going to be one and a half. One and a half soy. Now then we're going to go to the Milo and the... Uh, and you're going to do one Milo. Well, here's your one Milo, but you can't feed it like that. Milo's too big. This is fairly easy. Put the Milo in. It's going to mix with that little bit of corn. There is enough corn there to worry about. Now, you're going to do the same thing with the wheat, but I don't recommend putting the wheat in chick feed. They're growing too fast. They need their digestive system going. So in the chick mix for your, for your babies that are under six weeks of age, for your babies under six weeks of age, I recommend that you um, substitute. And if you are if you don't have a lot of birds to begin with, go ahead and substitute. Um, go ahead and substitute millet if you can get it cheap enough. Otherwise, just substitute cracked corn or um, 
uh, cracked corn or milo for the wheat. In other words, keep the wheat out. So here's your recipe once again. So we know. Here we go. Okay, I'm back. Now, what we've got is we're working on the chick mix. We've got the one part corn in here. We've got the two parts soy. Now, to, I'm, I'm substituting for the wheat because it slows the digestion. We don't want the wheat for the chick. So I'm substituting with I myself, no, not that. I myself am putting in the cracked corn that I, that I ground up, the ground corn. So I've got two parts of ground corn in here. One part Milo, ground Milo. You can substitute in this mix. Millet, if it's cheap, you don't have to grind the millet. It's small enough. It's small enough. You can substitute millet. You can substitute um, corn like I did. Um, you can substitute Milo, but it's got to be ground Milo. You can substitute rolled oats. Listen to those words. Rolled oats, not crimped oats. Crimped oats are the same thing with the fiber as sunflowers are. So it's a... Exactly. It's a nightmare to try to figure the protein against fiber. Don't use crimped oats. Crimped oats can be a treat, but they can't be in your feed mix. Your mix then is one corn, two soy, two more corn, and one milo. Ground milo, ground corn. That brings us to 20%, 20% protein. We're going to add one more crack, um, soy, ground soy. Now we're at 28%. 28%, I'm going to mix it by hand here. 28% is a little high for chicks. You should be around 24%. But 28% is perfect for pheasant, for ducks, for geese, any other fowl. And again, like I said, when we're dealing with a small flock, you want to kick that up to that 28% because you're not really going to notice the extra dollar or so that it costs you to make this um, 100 pounds of feed. But your chickens will. And there's my mix. If you can buy corn already ground, and it's about the same price as cracked corn, go right ahead and buy ground corn instead of cracked corn and feed that to your chickens. The smaller the particles of feed are, the faster they're digested by the animals. The bigger they are, the slower they're digested, with the exception of wheat, which is slowly digested. So again, before we move on, I just want to be sure that, be, and the reason I'm being so meticulous with this is there were the folks in Africa specifically who were questioning the mix. So the mix for your, chi for your chicks, your day-old chicks to six weeks, three parts, back off, one part corn, two parts soy, one part milo, M-I-L-O. If you don't know what milo is, milo is sorghum. Everybody can find out what sorghum is. We call it milo here in the southern United States, but it's sorghum. Now, you still have two parts left. Those two parts can be any of those. It can be corn, it can be wheat, uh, excuse me, it can be corn, it can be milo, it can be millet, it can be rolled oats. But you have to add two more parts of something. If you don't have that something, just add two more parts of corn. They, I, I raised my chicks for years on, on the mix with just the corn. So there's your chick mix, ready to go with the chick mix, and we'll move on. This is the simple part. Let's go to the, uh, to the regular chicken mix, just the regular chicken feed, which we're going to do one part or one bag or one bushel basket or whatever, just make sure it's a uniform measurement. One part corn, two parts soy, one part Milo, and two parts wheat. I don't have wheat here today, thanks to those young men that forgot my wheat, so we're going to pretend that's wheat. That's the mix. It is 19.33% protein. That mix that I just gave you is 19.33% protein. It'll be slightly different if you substitute, but not enough to worry about. So here's my base mix. One part corn, 
two parts soy, two parts wheat, one part milo or sorghum. Suitable substituting grains for wheat and milo are corn, number one, corn, millet, which is expensive here in America, rolled oats, again expensive here in America, barley, and for those of you in Africa and Asia, rice. In Americans, rice is rice. That, that's stuff they call converted rice. Don't ever think about giving a, a, any kind of a bird that because it'll get in the stomach and blow it up and explode. But you can certainly add rice, those of you that can afford rice. And if you're, if you're listening to me and you're in Louisiana or uh, southeastern Texas and you got access to cheap rice, go right ahead, feed the rice. They love it and the protein level is the same. That's your mix for the, for the adult chickens and for layers. But if you've got layers, feed free choice calcium carbonate, either in oyster shells or if you're lucky enough to live on top of limestone, you can crush up some of that limestone. It's got to be calcium carbonate, so make sure if you're crushing up limestone rock, you know it's calcium carbonate because there's two other kinds of limestone. Calcium carbonate, free choice for layers. Calcium carbonate ground, free choice for your chicks. Very important because they've got bones they're trying to develop. Make sure they've got that calcium carbonate available to them. And anybody that says it's going to cause pasty butt or binding, just in 15 years it hasn't with me, okay? Um, and in other words, calcium carbonate should be free choice for everybody, always available. Never, 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 never let your chickens run out of feed or calcium carbonate. Never. And what's the other thing? Water. Those three things they should always have a little bit available. Water, calcium carbonate, and food. If you don't do that, you will mess up their egg laying cycle. If you don't do that, you run the risk of messing up their bone development. If you say, I don't need premix, this is what I missed in the first video. If you say, I don't need premix, and you don't use premix, you run the risk of, at the very least, bone develop, bad bone development. They will start having splay legs. They'll start having all kinds of leg problems, sometimes wing problems, but we don't always see wing problems. And at about eight weeks of age, maybe 10 weeks of age, they will start dying in mass. In a large group, they will just start dropping dead, and all the symptoms are going to be like you have Newcastle's disease. But it's not. It's that deficiency is finally caught up with one of the internal organs. If a, uh, a veterinarian will write me, I'll put it in the um, comments what the exact cause is. But it is something in their internal organs that just shuts them down, and they drop dead. And it's not, or they're dying, and it's a terrible thing. They can't move, they're sitting there, and if you cannot do the things I'm saying, do not have poultry. If you can't take care of them, in other words, if you're too lazy, don't get poultry. If, you, if money is truly tight, and believe me, I know money, I know all about tight money, and you can't afford a premix, don't buy it. I mean, don't have chickens, period. You can't afford ground soy, don't have chickens. You have to have these things at the very least. And then, um, in, in, you know, in, in a bow to Joel Salatin and those other people, of course, pasturing your chickens is absolutely excellent. But I personally wouldn't pasture chicks, chickens that are under the age of six weeks. I wouldn't put them out to pasture. I would make sure they are on a balanced diet like this. I think I've pretty much covered everything to do with the feed. And as far as my mix goes, I've tried to address those folks in the Middle East and, and Africa that have written to me. I've tried to address particularly those folks that have a couple of chickens, three, four chickens, and you know have specific questions. If, if there's something I haven't covered or haven't made clear, by all means ask. It'll be posted to the, um, to the uh, comments. And I believe that covers the... Um, uh, my little update to the feed mix. Uh, I hope I've answered the questions and anything else you folks would like to see or would like clarification on, I'll answer in the uh, comments. Something else you'd like to see me do out here, 
just tell me. I'll try to put uh, a video together. And um, I hope I hope that you're here to watch the next video. But until that next video, this is Robert Earl out at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas saying bye for now.